such as those, Before I Fall, Delirium, and Pandemonium. Um, I'm also the author of the middle grade book, Liesl and Pell, and today I'm here to talk about um, inspiration for my second middle grade book. I don't actually have the book, just the cover, <laughs> um, but it's an awesome cover. It's called The Spindlers, and it comes out this fall. Um, in fact, I can tell you when it comes out by consulting the cover. Actually, no, I can't. But it's like it's September, or maybe October, but definitely this fall. So definitely look for it. The Spindlers is about a uh, girl named Liza who wakes up one morning to discover that her younger brother Patrick has been, uh, his soul has been stolen by Spindlers, which are like spider people. Uh, they're sp like spiders, but they live underground and they have human hands. Ooh, creepy. And she has to go into the underworld, um, the world below, to save him. And she meets a whole cast of crazy, weird characters, um, an overgrown rat who wears a newspaper skirt and a hat and um, is very uh, eccentric as she discovers this vast, um, populated world below. It's awesome, it's scary, it's um, funny, and you should definitely read it. Um, and anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about my inspiration. The Spindlers was a really great example of how I've pulled from other things I've read and also just other art that I've loved um, for for the idea. Uh, actually, The Spindlers came actually originally from a book I loved when I was six and I've always been obsessed with, by the late, great Maurice Sendak. And this book is one of his lesser known. It's called Outside Over There. And it really haunted me when I was a kid. It's really creepy and gorgeously illustrated. Um, and basically, it's the premise is of a um, series of, I don't know, what are they, goblins? Yeah, goblins who come in while Ida, the main character, the older sister, is playing her flute of some kind, and they steal her baby brother and replace it with a baby named of I made of ice. And it's really creepy. In the illustrations, she goes to hug the baby and finds that it melts. And that's how she knows that her brother has been stolen. And she has to go backwards out the window to save him, wearing this fantastic cloak. Um, and that book, that imagery, that stolen boy, has kind of haunted me from that day. Um, but it took 20 plus years to combine with some other factors, including some great prints that my sister brought me from England before those kind of ideas combi combined and converged and I had the idea for, for the Spindlers. Part of my inspiration came from these beautiful illustrations my sister got me when she was living in Oxford. This is one of my favorite illustrators, um, Arthur Rackham. And they have these little creepy fairies, and I'm actually going to take this one off. There's actually text that accompanies them. In this picture, the fairies are, I don't know if we can get a close-up, but the fairies are peeking in at this little cradle, and there's a baby sleeping. Um, and the back of it, the text that goes with it, says, almost fairy time. It's really creepy. <laughs> and this one features all these kind of evil-looking sprites, and on the back it says, if the bad ones among the fairies happen to be out. Really, really creepy. Um, so the idea of these fairies or beings that snatch up a child that come out um, really grabbed my imagination. We're back downstairs again. Oh, by the way, this is my home, in case you couldn't tell. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about how those kind of two inspirations, the prints that my sister brought me, the Arthur Rackham prints, and the Marie Sendak book combined in my head. Actually, it then took kind of a very a personal experience um, and kind of a phase in my life where I felt a little bit adrift and I felt that the people closest to me were changing in a way that I couldn't anticipate or name or really figure out. And that emotional, personal, resonant thing combined with those two almost intellectual, artistic um, inspirations kind of coalesced into the idea for the Spindlers. The idea of waking up and discovering that this person is very close to you is suddenly not the same and has changed overnight and how terrifying that be and what lengths you would go to get back the person that you love. Um, so, so that's kind of how I came up with the idea for the Spindlers. And then all the rest of it, um, the, the world below and the, the creatures that live there, that came as I was writing. I was kind of just exploring the underworld as well as Liza discovered it and explored it. But um, it's, you know, people ask me a lot where I get my inspiration from and I think it's really important. I always say, you know, you have to read and you have to expose yourself to as much creati creative output as possible 
because it helps you. I mean, creativity builds creativity. So Spindlers is a really great example of how my great love of literature and art um, have transformed and helped me as a writer.